Before we get into the video, Switchmart wants me to let you guys know that they are having a Prime Day deal. So from the 7th to the 11th of this month, the Switchmart combos are going to be 30% off. On the 12th and 13th, all products are 30% off on both their website and on Amazon. And on top of that, you guys can use this exclusive code to get an additional 5% off on their website and on Amazon. So that starts on the 7th to the 13th, so that's 35% off total. And anyone who places an order on either of the site or on Amazon from the 7th to the 13th will have a chance to win a brand new iPhone 14 when it is released. So that is insane and a lot of deals going on. So you definitely don't want to miss it at all. I'm gonna have a link down in the description below along with all the information as well in the comment section. So thank you guys so much for watching and now let's get into the video. All right, I'm good with that. What is going on you guys? This is Tech HD coming at you with a brand new video and today we're going to be taking a look at a bunch of new products from the company SwitchBot and we got over here all of it. So we got the SwitchBot Rod 2, we got the SwitchBot Lock and we got the SwitchBot Keypad. So if you guys don't remember, I reviewed a bunch of SwitchBot products over a year ago and I reviewed the first generation rods as well as the remote, the hub, you know, stuff like that. And now they came out with a smart lock and the keypad and they came out with the second generation rod too because there were some issues I had with the first generation and I will say that the second one did a major improvement. So let's dive in, let's talk about all the features, let's look at what it all comes with and see how it overall performs. So now let's take a look at what the current Rod 2 comes with. We got the user manual, a telescopic extendable rod, we got the bead fixer to help with pulling the curtains, we got the main body and the improved hook pair. The hook pair just easily clicks onto the main body and you can see the new way it clamps onto the rod by simply pulling it and it just goes back making it secure. Now if you want you can purchase the solar panel add-on and it just attaches onto the main body by the USB-C port or if the curtain rod doesn't get direct sunlight you could extend the USB-C cable from the solar panel and have it be on the curtain to get direct sunlight. Now taking a look at the SwitchBot lock we got the user manual, a couple of NFC tags, three thumb turn adapters of different sizes, the magnet that acts as a sensor, some wet wipes, a screwdriver to do the adjustments, and the smart lock itself. The smart lock can be manually unlocked and locked and you can see the compartment for the batteries and the adjustable base adapter. You can also see where to put the thumb turn adapter and there are double set of adhesives as well. Now taking a look at the keypad we got the user manual, the mounting plate, the alignment sticker and double sided tape. Then we got the rubber rings, the ejection tool and the removable tool. Then there is the screw kit and the expansion bolts, a wet wipe, some batteries, an NFC card and the keypad itself. On the back you can see how the mounting plate attaches to the unit itself, it just clicks in and that is it. So let's start to set up the SwitchBot lock first. We need to first see what thumb turn adapter your lock takes. Mine takes the middle size so that's the best one that we're going to be going with. Next we're going to take out our main unit and mess with the adjustable base adapter to see what level it takes. Use the screwdriver provided to remove the screws so you could do the adjustments. See what level it takes where the lock is leveled and then screw it back on to secure it. After that, apply the thumb turn adapter to the lock and remove the cover for the adhesive. Wipe the area where you're going to put the lock and apply some pressure onto the lock and hold onto it for a bit and that is it. No removing of any existing deadbolt. Now just apply the magnet center next to the lock and you are ready to set it up. Now on the SwitchBot app, we're going to start to calibrate the lock. It should locate the lock immediately. Now we're going to give the lock a name and if you have a SwitchBot hub, you could pair to that as well and give you access to unlock and lock away from your home and give you notifications wherever you are and you can control the lock with Google Home and Amazon Alexa. Now we're going to start to calibrate the lock by locking it manually, opening the door and locking it, having it near the magnet and testing it to make sure it all works. After that, you are all set. 
Now setting up the keypad is very easy as well. You have the option to screw it into the wall or on the door for a more secure option or you could just use the double sided adhesive for a more temporary solution. This is great for people like myself since I live in an apartment. So for this option we're going to start to add the batteries and then add the mounting plate. Then we just apply the double sided adhesive tape and then just wipe the area with the wet wipe provided and just put pressure and you are all set. Now we just want the app to locate the keypad and it finds it immediately. Next we need to hold the lock and OK button to set it to pair mode. After that we just give it a name and have it connect to the lock. Now at this point of the recording the smart lock didn't have the latest firmware in order for it to work with the keypad since this was an unreleased model but when you guys get your version you'll be able to pair it. So I needed to have SwitchBot send me their firmware manually in order for it to work. After that it walks you through how to mount the keypad and to either with the screws or with the adhesive tape. I went with the second method. After that you were able to set up a passcode now. You have the option to create a permanent, temporary, one time and an emergency passcode. For the passcode it needs to be a 6 to 12 digit code and after that you are all set. Now for the NFC card it could be a temporary or a permanent one and for that we just need to place the card onto the keypad with the card icon until the keypad emits a beeping noise. After that you are all set. Some settings for the lock is to have the ability to enable auto lock so this is great for when you close the door it will automatically lock after a few seconds and you can set the time it takes after you close the door for it to lock. It could be a few seconds to minutes and you can enable the relock feature if the door has been unlocked but not opened. You can enable and disable the indicator light and sound if you want and you can enable an alert feature to let you know if the door has been left open or if the door has been unlocked for a certain amount of time by making a warning sound and you can set the time that you want for it to warn you. You can also set notifications like who unlocked and locked the door manually or by user and if the door auto locked. You can also get a notification when the battery is low and you can also recalibrate the lock if you need to. Some of the key features of the keypad is you have the ability to enable or disable the lock button and you have the button be enabled when it detects that the door has been closed. You can disable the keypad if you want and you can also disable the NFC card as well. There is a removal alert that will do a continuous beeping noise if it detects that the keypad has been removed from the wall and you can get a notification of that as well. You can turn off the beeping noise on the phone or by entering the code. And lastly there is a backlight and sound control. Now during my testing the lock and keypad has been performing great. I could easily manually unlock the door and it will automatically lock behind me and then inputting the code has been responsive and has given me no issues. Using the NFC card has been working great as well and is much quicker than inputting the code. I could also use the NFC tag and it responds pretty fast as well and is reliable because I can have some place like on my card dashboard and just tap it and it begins to unlock the door while I'm making my way there. The one time and temporary passcode works completely like a regular passcode and I could easily give a time window on when they could use it and easily share it with all the information. The lock itself has been performing great when it comes to unlocking and locking my deadbolt. The automatic relocking has been performing good as well if I manually unlock but don't open the door. This has made my apartment more secure and makes it feel much more professional. Now let's get into the SwitchBot Current Rod version 2. Setting it up is much easier than the first generation. First you'll want to apply one of the hooks in between the first and second grommet. Then apply the second hook with the main body and then connect the other hook to the unit. Make sure the SwitchBot logo is facing inside the house and not outside. Next if you have the solar panel you can connect directly to the SwitchBot with the USB-C and I also have mine with the cable extended and I have the solar panel lower and applied it onto the curtain so that it could get more direct sunlight. Lastly, and this is optional in my opinion but it will help make the current slide more smoothly, you could attach the bead fixer to each of the grommets to help with the switch bot pull the current more efficiently. After that, you are all set to calibrate. Now the first thing that we're going to do is hold the button on the switch bot current for about 2 seconds to set it to pairing mode. On the app, you'll locate the switch bots and then it will ask you to want to make it one side or from the middle. From this, we're going to choose the middle. Next, it's going to let you know that the two switch bots have been paired and is being grouped together. Give it a name and then select the type of curtains you have. We're going to select the rod option and then we're going to select which version we have which is the second one and then which style of curtain you have. For me it's the grommet style and now it's walking you through how to install it in which we already did. Now we're going to begin to move the curtain to fully open and then fully close each side. We're going to then test to see if it fully opens and closes the curtains and then when you're satisfied just hit finish and you are all done with the calibration. Now some of the key features that we could do with the curtain is you could slide the curtain by a percentage and you can control both of the curtains or individually. 
You can enable a delay and you can set a schedule on when you want to open and or close the curtains. I usually have mine open at 7am so I can wake up to natural sunlight and then close at 12pm since I'm going to be at work. You can enable the touch and go feature and turn on and off the indicator light and you can change the motion mode to performance or silent. I prefer performance mode since having it on silent mode will lower the speed and might not be able to close and open the curtains. So I just deal with the noise. Lastly, you can pair the curtains with the SwitchBot remote and be able to control the curtains with a simple button. Now I also have a third SwitchBot curtain rod in my bedroom area and the setup process was about the same but the major difference with this rod is that it has an overlap like most curtain rods and my previous version would have so much trouble going over that overlap and would get stuck. So what SwitchBot did was they provided a telescopic extendable rod to go over the overlap and make the unit go smoothly through and it works just like it said it would. So I'm glad that they provide that at no extra cost. So during my testings, I've been loving the second generation current rod. It's easier to clamp on and set up and they provide you with some extra features to help improve the performance like the bead fixers and the overlap cover. It has not been getting stuck with my curtains and is strong enough to pull them. The touch and go has been working great as well when it comes to manually opening and closing the curtains and the schedules have been working at the same time I set it up so I have no problem with that as well. The solar panels have been keeping the units charged and I never have to worry about losing power and it lets me know when it's charging and around what time. Lastly, if you have other products from SwitchBot like the lock, remote, and meter, you could create scenes where for example if I unlock my door to leave the house, my curtains will start to close automatically. Or if the meter detects a temperature higher than let's say for example 80 degrees, it automatically closes the blinds. And with the remote, you could open and close the blinds at a touch of a button. So the SwitchBot Current Rod 2s have come a long way. Definitely an improvement from the first generation when it came to actually setting it up and installing it. I love the clamp functionality of the second generation, how it just easily just clamps in. Instead of with the first generation, you have to constantly click it in and tighten it. I like the beads that it makes it so much easier when it comes to pulling the actual curtain and then the motors are stronger as well so it just performs much better than the first generation. And then when you pair it with these solar panels you don't have to worry about removing the rods and having it to be charged and I love the fact that it lets you know right on the app when it's charging and when it's not and I like how it shows that battery indication of course but then if even if you don't get the solar panels the battery lasts up to 8 months which is insane so every 8 months or so you can just remove it, charge it real quick clamp it back on because it's super easy to put it back on and that's about it. Not only that but when you pair with other accessories from SwitchBot like for example the remote you can have this pair with all the curtains that you have and with a simple press of a button you can have it open or close the curtains and so I really like that and then not only that but then when you pair it with the thermometer and hydrometer plus this is really cool because you can set a scene where once this sets gets to a certain temperature it'll automatically close the curtains to conserve the heat as far as it goes to keep your house nice and cool which is really nice to keep the humidity low as well so I really like this option because I have mine set to when it becomes above 79 degrees it'll close all the curtains so that it's not so hot in this house and then I could just manually turn on the uh, thermostat as well and then the really cool thing is that when you pair it with the hub mini you have the ability to control it with your Amazon Alexa with your Google Home and just control it remotely uh, with the app whenever you're out and about and so when you get this and you get this the cool thing that I have is I have it set with an IFTTT the application and then with that I have it set to when this gets to a certain degree not only will it close all the curtains but then when this gets to a certain degree it will let my Ecobee thermostat my smart thermostat know to turn on the AC and to set it to a certain degree. So I seriously love that. I love how all the smart devices work seamlessly and pair and just work together. So that is honestly amazing. And then we got the SwitchBot lock and the keypad. And this is their first generation that they're making something like this. And I think that they did an amazing job when it comes to it. So they definitely looked at the competitors and I just love how easy it is to set it up and you don't have to replace your entire deadbolt. You still have the existing key. So if you live in an apartment, you still got maintenance to have access to your apartment. And so you won't get in trouble or anything like that. And then on top of that, just applying it is really simple and setting it up is very easy. And I like that they come with multiple pieces for different deadbolts. So it's just super easy when it comes to setting it up. And then on top of that, you have the keypad. So with the keypad, you have the ability to have your permanent key, uh, key code, as well as your temporary, your one-time, and your emergency one. So I love how they have all those features and setups, and it's just really easy to set it up with the lock 
Not only that, but they also provide you with an NFC card, so it's very simple to just tap it and it'll unlock the door, and that is about it. Very simple. And then not only that, but the keypad, this is one of two options. So the keypad is their basic one, but then they also have a keypad touch. So if you forget your NFC card, or if you don't want to constantly put in the code, you have a touch fingerprint reader, which is super, super nice. And I cannot wait to try that out. So if I ever leave this in my car, in my wallet, or if I want to constantly be putting in the six to 12 digit code, I can easily just use my fingerprint and that is about it. It'll unlock the door. And I love that they have that. So that will be coming out in the middle of this month. So definitely keep an eye on that. Now, the only con that I really dealt with the SwitchBot lock is for some reason, sometimes it doesn't automatically lock when I close the door. So it seems like it's not really sensing when it's been close and it automatically locks it when i manually unlock the door and close it it'll automatically do it there's no problem when it comes to automatically locking but then when i use the keypad open the door and then close it it'll it won't automatically lock for some reason so it's a hit or miss sometimes it'll do it but majority of the time it won't and that's why i have in the app for it to automatically lock after a minute so after a minute it'll just automatically lock i had no problems with that but for some reason, it's a hit and miss. I have times when I put the keypad or I use the NFC card, open the door, close it, it'll automatically lock. But then majority of the times when I open it and close it, it doesn't automatically lock. So I don't know if it's something with the magnet or the sensor, it's not close enough. I can't really have it get any closer until unless it interferes with the door. So I'm not sure when it comes to that. So I need maybe SwitchBot to come out with a firmware update, uh, some bug fixes when it comes to properly working with the keypad. Uh, but manually opening the door and then closing it, it will automatically lock it. So I have no problems with that. But as far as using the keypad, that's the only issue I've really dealt with. But there you guys have it. That is my review of the Switch by Current Rod 2 along with the keypad and the lock. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below as well as I'm going to have a link down in the description below to the other video that I made with SwitchBot as far as covering all the other products like the remote, the hub, the solar panels, all of that. I touch base when it comes to those products, but I have a lot more in-depth video of that in the other one. So definitely check that out. I'll have a link down in the description below. But thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below as well as everything will be linked down in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching please like comment and subscribe turn on post notifications so that you guys can be notified whenever i upload a new video follow me on twitter youtube instagram twitch and tiktok as always tech hd i'll catch you guys in the next video peace